These are all bags that I've purchased from Louis Vuitton over the past four years, and I'm going to tell you if I would buy them again today at the current price. Hey there, this is Lula LV. Welcome to my channel, or if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new here on this channel, I talk mostly about Louis Vuitton, but also other luxury designers and contemporary brands. I do product unboxings, reviews, previews of new Louis Vuitton collections, as well as tips on how to be a smart luxury shopper. So if all that's interesting to you, I hope you do subscribe and join us here. And if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Today I'm going to be going through all of the bags I own from Louis Vuitton that are still currently available from the boutique and I will tell you if I would still buy them today at their current retail price. I do have a few Louis Vuitton bags that have been discontinued or it's a vintage design, so those bags I will not be including in today's video because they're no longer available from the store. The bags we'll be talking about today are the Neverfull, Alma, Speedy, Neo Noe, Morel Tote, as well as the Felici Pochette and Pochette Accessoire. I'll do those two last. And I'll take a look at all the bags, tell you what I paid for them back when I purchased them, if I would repurchase it today at the current price, and why or why not. If you're thinking about buying any of these bags, hopefully this will help you make a decision. The first bag we'll be talking about is the Neverfull MM. I own two of these. I have one in the classic monogram canvas. That's packed away in my closet right now, but I'm sure you could imagine what it looks like. I also have the Neverfull MM here in black emprunt leather. The monogram canvas was the first Neverfull I purchased. I bought it in 2019, pre-loved from a local consignment store for $925. The retail price at the time for the Canvas Neverfull was $1,320, so I saved about, uh, what's that, like about $400 off the retail price at the time. Today, the Canvas Neverfull retails for $2,030. Again, that's in the MM size, which is the middle and the most popular size. This I purchased for $2,260 when it was first released. It now retails in emprunt leather for 2,710, so that's an increase of about $500 since I purchased it. And would I purchase the Neverfull again today at those current prices? I have to say no. Even though this is one of my favorite and most used bags, I don't think the canvas Neverfull is worth $2,000, and I don't think the leather Neverfulls are worth close to $3,000. There are some special edition Neverfulls that retail for up to, and I think above $3,000. The Neverfull and the new Kusama collaboration, which I talked about in my last video, I believe retails for over $3,000. There's one main reason why I think this isn't worth the current retail price, and that's because of the style of the bag. It's a tote bag. It's too big to be an everyday handbag. This is a bag that I would primarily use, and I think most people would primarily use as a work bag or a school bag when you need to carry maybe a laptop and some books or paperwork with you. This is a bag that you would use if you have kids and you're going out with your kids somewhere or maybe even as a diaper bag. Or this might be a bag that you're using while you're traveling, you're going on vacation or holiday somewhere. So you might be bringing this on an airplane or a train with you. So in all those situations, this bag is going to get wear and tear. This bag is in really good condition. However, I did get it not too long ago. The Neverfull I originally purchased had, um, had a quality issue, so I was able to return it and replace it with this bag. So I've only had this specific one for about one year, even though I originally purchased it at the purchase price two years ago, if that makes sense. I was able to exchange it at no additional cost. But the Neverfull that I have in canvas that was pre-loved, it was originally from, I think, 2014. 
I've had it since 2019. I take really good care of it, but even since I've had it, there's a scratch on the bottom of the canvas as well as a scratch on the piping. It's going to happen, it's inevitable. So I think for a tote, especially of this size, it's large, it's likely going to show wear and tear eventually if you're using it in the situations or the scenarios that I described. I would personally go pre-loved for a never full tote. You could save a few to several hundred dollars off of the retail price. When it eventually does start to show some wear and tear, it won't be quite so upsetting if you bought it pre-loved. You can also buy tote bags that are very functional from other luxury and even contemporary brands that are less expensive and serve the same purpose. It's a great bag, but not worth the current retail price, in my opinion. The next two bags I'm actually going to talk about together because I have all the same points to make about both of these styles, and it is the Speedy. This is the Speedy Bandolier 30, and the Alma. This is the Alma PM in Damier Bean as well. And both of these bags, I would recommend buying again at the current retail price. Let me put this down because I don't have enough room to hold these in frame with me. The Alma, I do also have in the BB size as well. This was a limited edition Dami Azor. It has this beautiful braided handle and the weight treated leather. I'm not going to talk about whether the Speedy 30 Bandolier specifically is worth buying again. I'm going to talk about the whole Speedy line in general as well as the whole Alma line in general. I do think these are worth buying and I, as I said, I have the same key points for both of these styles. These are both very classic Louis Vuitton styles. They've been around for ages they're not going to go out of style or look dated. These are very classic, timeless designs. And with the Speedy and the Alma, you can get these in almost any material, any color, any design. Whenever Louis Vuitton comes out with a special collection, the Alma BB is almost always included, as well as one of the versions of the Speedy, whether it's a Speedy Nano, Speedy 20, Speedy 25, there's always some iteration of the Speedy and the Alma available, so you can find whatever color and style works for you. That brings me into my second point, is that there's a lot of sizes available. For the Speedy, you can get it with or without the bandolier, which is the side strap. You can also get it in a whole variety of sizes. As I said before, there's a Nano Speedy, Speedy 20, Speedy 25, Speedy 30, Speedy 35. For the Alma, you can get the Alma BB, which is this size. You can also get the Alma PM, which is the next size up. There is an Alma MM and an Alma GM. I don't think the Alma GM is currently available. The Alma MM, I think just might only be in the classic canvas. In terms of price, the Alma BB, I believe, starts around $1,700, maybe $1,760. I'll put the exact price on screen. The Alma PM is currently priced at $1,960. I bought this three, two years ago at $1,660, so it's only gone up a couple hundred dollars in the past few years. Considering how big Louis Vuitton price increases can be, that's actually not a lot of money. So I do think this is still a good investment. In terms of the Speedy Bandolier 30, which is the version I specifically have, I bought this for 1,680, again, two years ago. It's only 1,890 now. So this has really not had a lot of increase lately. You can find a lot of speedies under the $2,000 mark, particularly the ones without the bandolier. I think that's really a great deal for Louis Vuitton, so I would 100% buy another speedy at the current retail price. The next bag I have to talk about is the Neo Noe MM, and would I buy this again at the current retail price? This is a no-brainer for me, yes, because the price I paid for this bag is still the current retail price of the bag. I only bought this last year. 
It was priced at $2,840 in this by color leather and that is still the current retail price of this bag however you can get it a lot less expensive in canvas again this is the mm larger size in canvas this is two thousand and thirty dollars as with the alma and the speedy there's a smaller size the neo noe bb this is the larger size they range in price from like i said before around two thousand dollars up to 3000 for the larger versions in leather as well as the special edition versions they do tend to go higher as well there is also the classic noe line which has a different drawstring style at the top but it's still a bucket bag and the noe bags in canvas are even less expensive so i do think those are a really great deal and i would buy this again because this makes a really great everyday bag. The Neo Noe specifically comes with three different strap options. There's a top handle strap, as well as an adjustable shoulder and crossbody strap. So there's a lot of options for carrying the bag. For me specifically, the MM is a great size because I can fit a lot in here but it's still a purse. It's not like carrying a huge tote bag. It's not going to show wear and tear quite as quickly using this as an everyday bag versus a travel or work tote. This is a really great option if you're looking for an everyday bag. The only thing I don't like is there's no feet on the bottom, but I do think in terms of Louis Vuitton prices, the Noe and the Neo Noe line, particularly in canvas, is very affordable and it's a really great option for a bag that you can use every day. And finally, the last of the larger full-size bags I have to talk about is the Morel Tote. I've only had this for a few months. I just bought it back in December. The retail price at the time was $3,100 and since that was only a few months ago, that is still the current retail value of this bag. It has not gone up since I purchased it. And I know this will be probably pretty unhelpful, but would I purchase this again? For me, this one's actually 50-50. If you really love the design of this bag, by all means, I do think it's worth the money. It is really well constructed. It has a great microfiber lining. It comes with an adjustable and removable shoulder strap you can also wear a crossbody it comes with a pochette so if you love the look of this bag i would say definitely it's worth the price however what makes this one 50 50 for me is i think you can get a similar sized bag for less money that has a larger capacity so the two issues with this bag number one is the weight it's very heavy it's made out of leather it also doesn't hold quite as much as you think it would because of this center divider that does take up quite a bit of room and it adds a lot of weight to the bag so if you're just looking for a small tote bag and your heart isn't specifically set on the morale tote you can find similar size and style bags that are a little bit lighter than this and don't have the inside divider so they can actually hold a little bit more. So that's why this one is 50-50 for me. The last two bags I'm going to talk about together and they are the Felici Pochette and the Pochette Accessoire. I'm going to do these together because I think there's a lot of comparisons and pros and cons that you can make between these two styles. But first, let's talk about the price before I forget. This I purchased two years ago, two and a half years ago, for $1,420 in the Empreinte leather. It currently retails for $1,690 in the Empreinte leather. This has had a significant price increase. This was $790 when I purchased it back in 2021. It currently retails for $1,290. So that is a several hundred dollar price increase. As for which one of these two bags I would buy again, it may surprise you, but it is the Felici Pochette. I think this is a really great versatile bag. 
The Pusha Accessoire, unfortunately, in my opinion, is very overpriced for what you get. And it's just a small canvas bag. I have a, a base shaper in the bottom that I use when I am just have it stored. It has one little slip pocket inside and it comes with a short vachetta or vachetta leather shoulder strap that obviously is removable. For a small canvas pouch, I do not think this is worth $1,290. I think it's a really great bag. I love it, I use it a lot, but I would not pay that much money for this. You can get this pre-loved, honestly pre-loved, they're almost as much as the current retail price, but occasionally you can find a deal on these. There's also a lot of other luxury designers as well as contemporary brands that make very similar pouches, same size, same capacity, same function for a fraction of the price. If you really want a Louis Vuitton bag, my personal choice is the Felicie Pochette. It's around the same price as a Pochette Accessoire. It's actually a little bit more expensive, but uh, this does also come in leather. And the reason why I love this more is it has so much more versatility. Again, it's an open pouch with a slip pocket in the back. Instead of the short Vachetta strap, it comes with a longer crossbody chain. You can double this up or just loop it under the flap like so to make it a shorter strap. So I personally like the chain that comes with the Felici a lot more than the strap that comes with the Pocha Accessoire. And again, you can carry it as a small bag, but it does also include two inserts, which I love, a small flat zipped pouch, as well as a coin, a card, excuse me, a card and cash envelope. So these I often take out and use in other bags. I think the inserts are really great that you get both of those plus the chain and the small bag as well. So this would honestly be my personal choice. If you want to get a special limited edition of the Felici Pochette or the Pochette Accessoire, both of these are usually, actually not the Pochette Accessoire, it's usually the mini pochette that's included in a lot of special collections. The Felici pochette is included in a lot of special collections. So this is available in canvas and leather, uh, emprunt leather as well as epi leather and a whole variety of colors. But that would be my verdict. I would purchase this again at the current retail price. The pochette accessoire, unfortunately, I do not think is worth the current retail price. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. That's always a huge help for me. And feel free to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to come back for more videos like this. That's all I have for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If there's any other bags that you own, comment below and let us know, would you buy it again today? I would love to add other bags and other styles to this list. So please feel free to include that in the comment box below. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to come back every Wednesday and Friday for new videos. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye now.